Dave Cox, I'm the producer of the Castlevania Lords of Shadow series and I'm also the head of the UK development studio. On Mirror of Fate we had uh, around 25 people as the core team but we also took members of the Castlevania Lords of Shadow team, uh, sorry Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2 team over and we kind of swapped, swapped about so we had artists working on both games and uh, sometimes the team grew up to 30 or 40 people uh, towards the end of the project. Well, we wanted to sort of mess with player perceptions. I mean, that's what really attracted us to 3DS in the first place, that we could present a kind of classic, you know, side-scrolling Castlevania game, but then, you know, kind of fool players by bringing the camera into the world, by, you know, giving the player the depth of field that you don't normally get with, with other console games. And in many ways, um, you know, it feels more like a modern game with its third-person perspective sometimes when you're fighting boss characters uh, and that kind of thing. And I think that's... Um, that's something very unique to the 3DS system that you can't do on other systems. And that's what really excited the team at the very beginning when we were talking about projects for, you know, for a handheld device. Uh, it was the 3DS's capabilities with 3D that, that we thought we could really have a lot of fun with. Yeah, it was. Um, again, it is that we, what we like doing with the Lords of Shadow series is sort of shattering expectations, you know, by uh, presenting certain things that the players aren't expecting. You know, Castlevania's been around for 25 years, and uh, what we like to do is kind of mix that up and do new things with it. And, uh, you know, the, the 3DS really gave us that opportunity in terms of visual style and approach to do something different and something new with the series. Uh, you know, on the surface it looks like the kind of classic side scroller, but you know, underneath it is a very kind of mod thoroughly modern take on the Castlevania universe. Yeah, there's a lot of it's a very fine balance uh, you have to take with a, when you're rebooting an old series. Uh, on the one hand, you want to modernise it and change it and uh, you know make it more relevant to the modern audience, but at the same time, you don't want to alienate the old school fans. Um, and that's something that you know that, that's constantly we're constantly thinking about in the development process. Uh, with Castlevania: Lords of Shadow, you know it went on to become the most successful Castlevania ever released. So in that respect, we felt vindicated and that we were on the right track. But what we've tried to do with Mirror of Fate is you know, keep that modern approach but at the same time um, bring more classic elements of the series back to the front. Um, so, so I think you know, Mirror of Fate feels like uh, a, a, a nice marriage between old and new. No, it's, more, it's much more of a focus on action, uh, especially action combat, which is what the Lords of Shadow series is all about. Um, but we've brought these kind of other, you know, like you say, the RPG elements of levelling up and um, you know, the exploration aspects of uh, finding lots of things hidden here and there and you know, traversing you know, around Dracula's castle. We've, we've, uh, we've sort of brought them things back more to the forefront. So uh, you know, when players get this game, if you enjoyed Castlevania Lords of Shadow, it's going to feel very much like the same game, very much like a sequel, but uh, with these other elements kind of beefed up, if you like. Yeah, uh, in certain places, what we're doing is we're telling the story actually backwards. Um, very similar to Christopher Nolan's Memento film, where you know you start at uh, start at the end and work your way through to the beginning. Um, and it's the beginning, um, you know, where the shocking conclusion to the saga actually actually comes across. The shocking conclusion to Mirror of Fate comes across, and um, that kind of makes you want to replay the whole game again because all the scenes that you've watched so far, you know, they make more sense. They've got hidden meaning and hidden depth. Um, and you play through as characters that meet each other, so for example Simon and Alucard meet during their adventure and you see cutscenes from various different perspectives, so you see it from Simon's perspective on one playthrough and then as you play through as Alucard you get it from Alucard's perspective. And um, it gives the story a lot of depth and um, keeps the player intrigued as they're playing through on their first playthrough and then makes them want to play through again. one main story um, it all ties in together um, you know even the prologue where you play as Gabriel it seems like it's not connected but it actually is because there's a boss character uh, that Gabriel faces um, that each character faces in their own time um, and you know what we're trying to do with Mirror of Fate is we're, we're talking about fate and about destiny and how you know the actions of one person affect the actions of another you know Dracula you know, Gabriel uh, takes this dark path as Dracula and that has an effect on his son Trevor and the things that Trevor does in the game has an impact on his son Simon and it's that kind of uh, you know, spiralling, ballooning aspect of uh, you know, consequences that create this blood feud between Dracula and the Belmonts and that's what we really focus on in this particular game. Yeah, we have, um, 
Each player has their own abilities, their own unique abilities, and um, you know there is a core fighting system throughout the game. But what we do is we mix it up with these sub weapons and the abilities that the player can cap, that the player can collect. Simon has these guardians that um, you know he uses for protection and also for ranged combat. So they um, that they help him during the combat. Um, and likewise for Trevor, he has light and shadow magic. Um, light magic for healing, shadow magic for dishing out damage. Uh, and Alucard being a vampire, he has vampiric power, so he's able to turn into mist. Um, that allows him to explore areas of the castle that other characters can't get to. But it also allows him to heal himself. Um, and he can turn into a wolf, which gives him the ability to deal out more damage. So there's lots of variety in, in, in each character. And um, because this is such a big game, you know, 16 to 20 hours of gameplay, it's a huge game. You know, we wanted to give players that variety and uh, you know, keep things fresh for them as they play through. The reason that we chose the 3DS really was because of the possibilities of the 3D excited us. Uh, we wanted to do a, a console handheld version when we finished Laws of Shadow 1. Um, and before that game came out, we weren't quite sure if the game was going to be accepted. We weren't quite sure if it was going to be successful, and the studio, um, you know, the studio needed another project fairly quickly. So we came up with the concept of a handheld, and started to develop the handheld. Got the project greenlit, and then obviously Lords of Shadow came out, was very successful. Uh, surprised even us how successful it was. It went on to become the most successful Castlevania in, in, in the series history. Uh, at that point, Konami senior management said to us, "Well, we need a sequel," and uh, we were already started the development of the of the handheld game. And uh, so we've had to expand the team in order to incorporate both formats. And each game uh, has a standalone story. I mean, when you play Lords of Shadow, you remember that it, you know it had a story of Gabriel bringing back his dead wife, the God Mask, etc. Um, same for Mirror Fate; it has a standalone story. Um, and Lords of Shadow 2 is the end of the trilogy. There is an overarching story that encompasses all three. So if you want to enjoy the full saga. Uh, and the backstory behind it, or you need to play all three. But um, if you just want to play Mirror of Fate by itself, you're going to have a fantastic story, and you don't need to have played the other two games to understand it. And that's the good thing about this title.